to order the Middle English Teacher's Notes, price £1.30, and the Pupils' Anthology, price £3.50. Please send a cheque or postal order made out to Thames Television to the School's Publications Officer, Thames Television, 149 Tottenham Court Road, London W1P9LL, or you can contact your local ITV company. Ideas books for use by pupils or teachers have been published by Heinemann Educational to accompany the Starting Science series. These ITV books are available from Books for Students, Leamington Spa, Warwickshire, or from your usual supplier. Do you know, I've always wanted to do that, to get my feet off the ground and find some space and some freedom to actually fly like a bird. In 1783, Joseph Montgolfier, a Frenchman, did fly for just a few minutes using a huge paper bag filled with hot air. In the same year, a second Frenchman used a different type of balloon and travelled 15 miles, terrifying everybody. The problem with balloons was that they would only go where the wind blew them. They were out of control. How about this for control in the air? Just a movement of my hands and I can make it dive. Or climb. Move to the left. And to the right.
just like flying a plane. And that's not as far-fetched as you might think, because some of the earliest experiments in controlled flight were done with kites. Kites like that one. That's a scale model of a famous kite used by a Texan named Samuel Franklin Cody, who came to England in 1890. He experimented with huge box kites, sets of them flying one above the other on the same length of line. Cody's plan was to use kites to lift men safely from the ground. His flyers were pulled up the kite line in a wicker basket, using a small kite to control their speed and height. The kite line itself was held tight by four massive box kites, the largest 36 meters across, bigger than a house. The army paid Cody to develop his kites to lift observers into the air for spotting enemy guns. And the Navy held successful experiments to see if man-lifting kites could safely be flown from onboard ship. Cody went on to build and fly the first British aeroplane. In fact, his plane and this one, built in America by the Wright brothers, looked very like box kites with engines. These young scientists are experimenting with kites of their own. This type of kite is made by fitting polythene onto a light wooden frame. The children are hoping to develop a kite that will fly higher and for longer than any other. An important part of this kite is its tail. But how long should this tail be? That's what these scientists are trying to find out. There are other experiments as well. Perhaps the kite is easier to control in the air using two strings instead of just one. It was experiments like these that found a shape that lifted in the air. It was the same shape that is found on a bird's wing. It's the shape that we now call an aerofoil. The bottom surface is flat and the top curved. Those early experimenters discovered that when the aerofoil was held in the wind, it would move upwards. It lifted. They had discovered a shape that could be used on the wings of an aeroplane and the blades of a helicopter. The most successful of all experimenters with helicopters was an American called Bell. His helicopter used blades on the tail as well as the main blade to move in the air under greater control than many of his rivals. 
other experiments were less successful. This flying machine was a mixture of aeroplane and helicopter, an autogyro. The engine pulled the machine forward and the blades spun in the wind to keep it in the air. This experimental helicopter also used the power of the wind to keep it flying. It had no engine and the blades had to be started by hand. Once in the air, you stayed there as long as the wind blew, or until you were winched down again. This helicopter was specially designed to fly at sea, where it could be towed along if there were little wind. It could also be quickly pulled apart and packed away into boxes. The helicopter was small enough to be flown from a submarine. This helicopter was also experimental. It had an engine, but this engine turned not one, but two sets of blades, each spinning in opposite directions. And this is what all that experimental work led up to the modern helicopter. It's moved about the sky with the help of these big blades up there and with the smaller ones on the tail. I'll show you how. This is much safer. These are parts of a helicopter's blades. You can see the rounded aerofoil shape and normally they would extend right out in each direction. This control, number one, first accelerates the blades to their correct speed and then by pulling changes the twist of the blades very slightly. Changing the twist causes lift and up we go. Right, we're going to take off. We shall do this by raising the lever in my left hand and the machine will climb vertically into the air. Here's the lever coming up and the machine now beginning to lift. Control number two, this one, can twist each blade independently. Doing this causes the helicopter to go forward, backwards, or sideways, one way or the other. And control number three, down here, operated with the feet, changes the blades on the tail to turn the whole plane round to let the pilot look in any direction that he wants to. A piece of plastic can be shaped to make a simple flying machine that works in the same way as a helicopter.
a hole is punched through the plastic as near the center as possible. Bending the plastic wing produces a simple aerofoil. It was only 200 years ago that Montgolfier first lifted from the surface of the earth using a flimsy paper balloon. Less than 100 years ago, Cody experimented with kites to find some way of controlling movement in the air. And only 80 years ago, the Wright brothers flew using aerofoil wings. Nowadays, these young scientists are experimenting to find safe and reliable ways of launching their own flying machines. Thank you. 